glad you could join me again today. I've been uh, reading and, and hearing and even meditating on this idea of self-care. I don't know how it started. I've been reading lots of different books about uh, self-love and different things. And so I guess it kind of got me started on that. But I thought I'd begin to share with you some of what I've been learning. So today uh, we're going to start a series on self-care. We'll look at it for several weeks. But I want to try to get us a, a definition today, a, a working definition, so we can start to lay a good foundation of what is self-care. So I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, the first thing, well, the first thing I thought of was an old song that says, take good care of yourself, you belong to me. I think it's from an old movie, I don't know, but I love it. Button up your overcoat when the wind is cold, take good care of yourself, you belong to me. And you know, um, I know that it's not talking about the Lord at all, but I think to myself how many times the Lord probably puts his arms around us and says the very same thing. You belong to me, so take good care of yourself. And you know, scripture actually backs that up in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. It says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God, and you're not your own. You're bought with a price, right? Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And then when we get into Ephesians in chapter 5, and he talks about the relationship of the husband and wife and the idea of Christ in the church, he talks about that no man ever yet hated his flesh, but he nourishes and cherishes it. So God knows that we need to have self-care. It's, it's something that he champions in that matter because he knows that we are just flesh, aren't we? But he understands and he cares for us in that way. Well, I got to looking around and I thought I need a little bit more maybe of a definition of self-care. So I thought I'll go look on the internet. And so here's a few things that I found. This one's from a website called youngminds.org.uk. And they say that self-care in its simplest form is just the little things that we do to look after our own mental health. It's about trying to listen to how we are feeling and understanding what we need, even when it's difficult, so that we can care for ourselves. And I, I think I'd agree with that, wouldn't you? They go on to say, this could mean taking a time out when we're feeling overwhelmed. It could mean uh, making time to do an activity that we know will make us feel good. Or it could be as simple as making sure to do the basic things like eating and sleeping well when we're struggling. It could be setting a boundary with someone to look after our own mental health. It could be pushing yourself to do something you want to do, even though you're afraid or nervous about doing it. It could be giving yourself permission to take a break or do nothing at all. But that all sounds good, doesn't it? I think many of those, most of those, are good healthy things for us to do. So I went to another website called VeryWellMind.com. And they said that self-care has been defined as a multi-dimensional, multi-faceted purpose of purposeful engagement and strategies that promote healthy functioning and enhance well-being. Well, essentially, the term describes a conscious act a person takes in order to promote their physical, mental, and emotional health. All right, so that's what the world says. What does the Bible say? We looked at those first two verses at the beginning, but you know what? The Bible never really uses the term self-care or even really gets uh, that defined in what it talks about, but it does give us examples and instruction. So throughout the Psalms, as we look at David, we see his type of self-care. He faced his struggles and his stresses, and with each Psalm, you'll see that he turns his um, cares back over to the Lord. And many times you'll read, when you're reading about his life, it says that he behaved himself wisely. That's self-care as well. And Jesus is another example. He drew himself aside to pray and to be with his father when the when the crowds got too heavy, when the pressure got to be too much or it increased. And that was Jesus' form of self-care. Now, none of these definitions that we've talked about are unhealthy. We should care for our bodies and our lives and our minds, but we should also make wise choices. That's what the Bible teaches. So today, in order to help uh, hone down this idea of self-care, I want us to look at it in uh, six different areas. And the first area is our, our personage, the, the taking care of our health, our grooming, our diet. 
And it almost goes to, uh, without saying that unless you feed, clothe, and take care of yourself, there's going to be a high cost to pay. And this physical self-care is not only what you eat, but it also has to do with how much sleep you get, how much physical exercise or activity you do, you do because we know that all those things contribute to a, a healthy lifestyle. So when we think about the definition of self-care, then taking care of ourselves physically is probably the first thing that we think of it because it's our most basic need. Because when we feel good physically, it benefits every area, doesn't it? When we feel uh, poorly or when we're not doing so well physically, that also affects everything. So the idea is take care of yourself, get the rest you need, eat the, a healthy diet, brush your teeth, iron your shirt, you know, just take good care of yourself because you're the only one that can do that. And the next thing I thought of is taking time to look at our home, to look at our nest, because you know what? Our nest reveals what's happening in our heart. Is your nest clean? Is, is it healthy? Um, you know, if there's chaos, it's just gonna breed more chaos. If there's clutter, it's gonna breed more clutter. If there's disorganization, it's just gonna do the same. So our house or our home many times speaks volumes as to who we are and how we're actually caring for ourselves. There's a little verse in Proverbs that talks about a careless man. It says, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. This man's home or his field was uh, revealing his slothful attitude. And the book of Proverbs is has a lot more to say about taking care of our property and our home, but that's not our topic for today. So if you're struggling with this one, take a stroll through Proverbs and look and see what God says about caring for your property and your provisions and your plans. It, it really is a heart issue. The third thing I think we need to think about is how are we caring for our relationships? Are you speaking kindly? Are you a trusted friend? Are you thoughtful and considerate of others? Sometimes we think self-care is judging how others are treating us, but in all honesty, how we treat others should be our first consideration. Self-care means that we judge ourselves first. We don't go around looking for blame or to blame others, but we take responsibility for our emotional responses, for our communication skills and our, and our respect toward others. We see that in Philippians, that putting the needs of others first is the right way to go at life. Also, how are you caring for your gifts and your talents, the things that God has given you? Are you reaching your full potential? That might be an odd question, but the fact of the matter is that when we shove down or refuse to use our talents because of fear or whatever, and we just, we're just stifling ourselves, we're stifling our emotions, we're stifling our mental health, but when we use our gifts and talents, we can find more contentment and we can have a feeling of accomplishment. And we know that we're actually contributing to society and we're being productive and beneficial. And then that leads us to you, your inner you. Are you nurturing your inner self? How are you caring for your personal identity? With How are you using wisdom uh, in your decisions? Are you, are you being honest? Do you have integrity? You know, when we live outside of our personal standards in these issues, that it creates an internal pressure and a, a presence of guilt that's going to uh, increase stress in our lives. So self-care means that we will address these things and we will live within uh, ex our own acceptable standard of behavior, hopefully based on that of Christ. But even if not, uh, we know that lying is wrong. We know that stealing is wrong. We, so we don't participate in those things and we keep our lives clean that way. And it reduces the stress in our life. And then, are you nurturing your spiritual side? Are you growing in the Lord? Do you even know the Lord or are you ignoring this side of self-care? You know, we were created with a God-shaped hole and nothing outside of him can fill that. No amount of grooming or housework or friendships or creativity or self-determination is going to change that fact. We need God. Without him, we are missing a vital component in our life. Because you see that all self-care is really based in this God-given design. He designed us in such a way that we naturally will care for our physical needs. If we have a good mental health, we will do that. 
We will desire to make a home, to have relationships with others. We will recognize and use our gifts and talents, and we'll have a deep inner understanding that there is a God in heaven who is the final judge. All of these things are his gifts to us. And if we're going to be doing self-care properly, we recognize life as a gift from God and we seek to glorify him in all that we do. I came across one more interesting definition of self-care. A lady named Jody Harvey puts it this way. Self-care, as defined by the Lord, is choosing to believe the hard truth that you are not God. It's choosing to trust the God who made you is sufficient and that you were made to rest in him. Self-care means that you establish boundaries in your life and you schedule to actively say to your soul, God will take care of this. In other words, saying no to yourself is often the first step of self-care. Saying no to yourself. We're going to talk about that next week.